from farm to table, or uh, in this case, from swamp to table. I think he spent most of his life living in that swamp. You can see by his antlers, like the other two bulls had like very red antlers from rubbing on alders. And I think this guy was digging rut pits in that swamp. Like as we were packing his meat out, we would walk by and it just like, it was, it was pretty fragrant and not the greatest, not the greatest smell, a little funky. So today we're gonna eat him. These are his shins, so I froze these. I held the frozen shank and essentially just chop sawed it and it, uh, it turned out pretty good. Like, I mean, it did its job. It's like I still have all my fingers. It was kind of sketchy. I don't know if I will do it that way again. It made a lot of mess. I had to clean my chop saw, but now we're having some people over tonight, so I'm gonna cook them up. So normally I would just cut all this meat off the bone, put it in the grinder and turn it into grind. When you get a whole moose to yourself, we've had an extremely successful season. It was awesome. Um, you you want to try different things. Each person will have their own piece. It's all got a little bit of bone marrow in it. The bone marrow inside turns out to be like gravy. It's, it's, it, it's amazing. Cook it for the next probably four hours. This tough cut of meat will be super tender and flavorful from simmering and, and all the spices. Well, here we go. So there's lightly salt with salt and pepper. I'm using two pans here just so I can get enough stuff. I'm gonna Throw a couple tablespoons of olive oil in there. Starting to get a good browning on it. I think it's time to flip them here. Let's see. See what she looks like. Oh yeah, that's perfect. So all this stuff that's left in the pan will get deglazed and that's just pure flavor right there. We've got a nice browning on them, so now we're going to cut up some vegetables. So now we're gonna add the carrots, onions, and celery. I'm just kinda doing half and half since I got a bigger thing. Everything except for the garlic, we'll do the garlic later, and we're just gonna brown these up a bit. Caramelize the tomato paste a bit. Yeah, so I'm adding some white wine here. It's dry white wine. So we're gonna add one cup to each. Deglaze is the plan and all those flavors that were on the bottom get released. The pan is deglazed, scraped all that yummy flavor off the bottom and uh, the white wine has reduced a little bit so now we're going to add some water. Brought it back to boil and now we're just going to add a little bit of thyme, a bit of rosemary, a couple bay leaves. And no cooking video is complete without a drone shot. For my side, I am going to do some twice baked potatoes. like three and a half hours. Just tried some, it's still a little bit uh, tough. Flavor's really good, sauce tastes awesome. See how the twice baked potatoes are doing. 
I think those are gonna be amazing. How can they not? So Asabuco's done. It doesn't actually look that pretty. I think next time I might cut the membrane off the outside. It kind of shrank and pulled. Uh, the recipe calls for twine, which I tried last time. It did the same thing, but I've tasted it. It tastes amazing. I've got my uh, twice baked potatoes here, and we're just about to plate this. So uh, bon appetit, man. My favorite part right here. Tastes like gravy to me. Okay, that's it for the uh, for the asabuco. What do I say to end the video? Finn. Well, you could probably lace so a nice a, good mousse? a nice dad joke, but moose. Yeah. Wow, this tastes amusing. That was my moose joke, dad joke. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but um, well, thanks for watching. Asabuco tastes awesome, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thank you.